pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Roll. Bram Kassoon. Here. Johnson. Absent. John Francois. Here. Sid. Here. Witt. Here. Kleiner. Here. Burr. Here. Massey. Absent. President Rodriguez. Here. We have a quorum. Approval minutes. Tonight we have the council meeting minutes from June 6, 2017. Motion to approve the minutes. Alderman Kleiner, second by Alderman Witt. All in favor? Aye. 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 Correspondence. We have one correspondence tonight from Deepak Kamor from Orange County Medicoach uh, submitting a letter with the intent to be granted permission to insure vans and sport utility, utility vehicles as part of my fleet of taxi cabs. Order legislative. That is all for correspondence. For the good of the city, anyone would like to address this council, please step up. You have four minutes. Thank you very much. Alderman Rodriguez, members of the Common Council. John Perino, member of the Middletown Board of Education. The first thing I'd like to do is thank all the city departments for their great cooperation in making our 2017 graduation a success. Police Department, Fire Department, Public Works Department. We wouldn't have been able to pull it off without you, so thank you. You know, I've long believed that you can't have a good school district without a good city, and you can't have a good city without a good school district. And I believe we have that on both ends. Uh, uh, my purpose here tonight is to uh, inform you that Kevin Gomez is going to be the liaison between the city and the uh, Middletown Board of Education. Um, I asked Kevin if he could come tonight. He, he's been delayed, uh, but uh, what I'd like him to do, and I've asked him to do, is to report on uh, materials that may impact the city and the students of the city and bring back material that may impact the school district. Uh, one of the initiatives this coming year is a free lunch and breakfast program for all students in the district. And this was made possible by the very hard work of our food service director and assistant director, Deborah Delaney and Lauren Burr. By the way, Tom, your daughter's doing an excellent job. It took advantage, it's taking advantage of Provision 40 of the National Lunch Act. So there's no cost to the no cost to the district. We have found that uh, some students who are eligible will not take advantage of the free lunch uh, program because uh, they feel a little shamed, perhaps. So this is why we're doing this, uh, lunch and breakfast. So uh, that's it for me this evening. I want to thank you for listening. Kevin Big shots here, here now. Kevin now. <laughs> I said, Kevin, I introduced you when you weren't here, and Kevin is the liaison between the city and the uh, Board of Education this year. Thank you, Mr. Perino. And uh, running out of breath, I just came from a meeting with a client. So, Attorney Jess, but uh, President Rodriguez, members of the Common Council, it is uh, truly a humble honor to be able to serve as the liaison to the city of Middletown on behalf of uh, the enlarged city school district. I think that it's my goal is to see a new era or time period where we could work together in a closer partnership for the good of our children. I think that we serve the same constituents. At the end of the day, when we work for our children, we are investing in the future. They are our country's future, and the decisions we make for them will well determine um, that whether we are a country of freedom and opportunity for all in the future. And I think that uh, we are living in no ordinary times. There are a lot of changes at the federal level, state level, and local level where I think we're going to have to work in closer partnership uh, to make sure that schools have the appropriate funding that we have the necessary resources 
and that they continue to offer excellence for all our children. And I think that uh, we have outstanding people on both sides, on the school board, and outstanding members of the Common Council, who I know many of them as parents, uh, entrepreneurs, who work on the Board of Education, work with our Education Board, wonderful members. I think together we can make a common in, uh, difference. So I look forward to working with everyone here, with our mayor, and uh, together for the good of our children, let's make uh, great things happen for them. And uh, happy birthday, by the way. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Anyone else would like to address the council? Um, you know, we, we have a blood shortage, so um, go and donate. You know, it's really needed, and you never know when you need it. Um, number two, you know, correction for last time, you know, I hope the council works with our Board of Ed so that low-income working residents have access to pre-K if they cannot afford it. You know, that's something we definitely need. The third thing I want to say is that, you know, I know that um, we were told that CBV was an issue we cannot deal with, but but I want to give an update because it does directly affect air and water quality in Middletown. Three of the activists decided that they'd rather go to jail than to pay the unjust fine. I just want to thank the Way Way on the Six because the story went national. It was on USA Today. But the better news is that CPV is being delayed until 2018, which means we could definitely do something. And fourth, lastly, have a happy 4th of July. I know the council moved the meeting to the third, but unfortunately, we can't all do that. Nor can we give ourselves 100% raises, but the point still stands. So have, have a happy fourth. Hello, everyone. Happy 4th of July. Uh, my name is Ignacio Acevedo. I'm the organizer for Community Voices Heard. And I'm very happy that I came early to, have, to be part of the conversation you guys were having about uh, of speeding, right? Uh, I think there was a, a part of the conversation about putting police, right? Um, and I'm always cautious when it comes to over-policing uh, because there's consequences to different communities. I, I would really like to be a part of a campaign to inform residents, right, taking care of each other. Uh, an investment in that before we put the police in there. I mean, I think the police could take other, other jobs that are probably equally important. Uh, but in this particular moment in our community, a ticket for a person, it triggers different consequences. So I don't want to see a parent, you know, he, for a certain reason, he, you know, went over his speed limit 10 miles an hour and then he is deported. So I really advocate to probably, I know you probably have this conversation for a while already and over it every year, but it, it sounds like I would like to be part of it. So, thank you. Anyone else would like to address the council? Hello, uh, good evening everybody. It's a pleasure, it's an honor th to be here talking to all these great personalities of, those, of this wonderful city where I've been spending my last 15 years of my life. Um, this is the first time I come here and the reason because I come here is because I want to talk in the name of all, most of all the members of the Spanish community um, that we live here. And, well, now I call my attention the speeding issue. I think it's very important to make sure we reduce the speeding in the city of Middletown uh, compared to neighbor cities like uh, Goshen or um, Montgomery. Uh, people is always scared and is afraid of uh, myself like going in there because we got to watch out our, our speed because they, they don't play. If we make a campaign of informing people and make people aware, you better slow down before you get pulled over. If you get pulled over, there is going to be no, like no mercy. You're going to get points on your license and that's going to be a clear message for everybody. And also, I think that it will be fair for everybody. And also giving a little of... Um, I know the police officers are very busy dealing with other stuff. Uh, um, two weeks ago, the chief of the police of uh, the neighbor's city of uh, Walkill, uh, he was in a radio show, and he said they are very reinforcing the chase of uh, drugs and other stuff that are killing our communities, you know, I mean, that affecting. Like, I live in Linden Avenue, and I've been seeing a lot of stuff that are happening there. So 
police officers are very uh, is busy in other stuff that are very important for for our, the safe of the community too so i think a campaign of information and make this point clear like there is no play around there is no games slow down it will be a good message and i would like to be part of that campaign and promote it on radio shows in spanish and english and make sure the whole orange county uh, knows about it thank you thank you anyone else would like to address the council Okay, reports on department heads. Economic development. Good evening, everyone. Happy 4th. Um, I just want to say uh, thank you to everybody for a successful, safe, um, and it was a great weekend for our Stars and Stripes celebration. Um, everybody from Parks and Rec to uh, DPW, the police, uh, fire department, uh, the team down at the Paramount and, and such. We had to juggle the weather a little bit Friday and Saturday, but it all worked out and it was a great crowd. And, um, you know, thank you for everybody supporting the event. And we're wrapping up um, with a military show on uh, Thursday night at the Paramount. Must have a ticket to come in. It's free, but you must have a ticket. And currently, I, I think we are sold out, but um, keep checking to see if any tickets become available, but we're looking forward to wrapping up the 4th and everybody enjoying the uh, rest of the holiday. Also tonight, I know Mr. Gerton's gonna touch upon the downtown zoning, so I'm gonna defer to him on that during the public hearing and so forth, but that's all I have for tonight. Any questions for Maria? Thank you, Maria. Thank you. DBW Commissioner. Good evening. I'll be very brief tonight. Uh, wish America a happy birthday again, hopefully another thousand years uh, to come. Uh, Mr. Perino and Kevin, Mr. Kevin Go uh, Gomez, congratulations on being elected. And from my end in here, we look forward to working with you guys as we have done in the past. The uh, roads, uh, we're going to start milling and paving. Just a reminder, we're going to start the milling and paving on uh, July 5th. So please bear with us, be patient. It's going to take some time. It's going to be uh, discomforting, but it's going to be for the better interest uh, for, the, uh, for your local area and the whole city. So we apologize for that in advance and be patient. And uh, uh, the other thing is um, Woolworth Building. The mayor did sign the construction uh, contracts regarding the Woolworth Building. So we expect work to start very soon. Right now we're waiting for variance from the Department of Labor. And once the variance is, the, the building has been posted for asbestos abatement and mold abatement. Once we get the variance from the Department of Labor being renewed, because we already had it and expired, once it's renewed, we're gonna start working at it immediately. And with that, I will stop if you have any questions. I questions? promise to be brief. Um, Kleiner. Uh, thank you. Uh, Commissioner, how did the electronics drop off go? I, uh, to be honest with you, I have not, <laughs> I gotta be frank with you, I did, not, I did not get a report because my deputy commissioner just, as you know, he left, he retired and we have a new one and we're getting ready for many things. I did not get that report yet. So. Okay, I didn't I'm see sure nearly as many, I drove by, I didn't see nearly as much as last okay. year. So I hope, think we're catching up, but. Okay, good. Okay, thank good. You. I'm sorry, I don't have that report for you. Anyone else? Thank you, Jacob. Yes, sir. Recreation. Evening, folks. Uh, summer is here. Everything started last week. Uh, the Parks Department and the Rec Department are very tired people, but we still have smiles on our faces. Um, the pools are busy. Davidge is packed. Uh, we, we brought in $1,000 on Sunday at a dollar a clip. So that tells you what that pool's like, and the lifeguards are doing a wonderful job. And I'd like to thank the community for the cooperation. We've really had no issues. They're following the rules, they're friendly, and I hope that keeps up all summer. Uh, the guards have a really rough job out there, and we appreciate everybody's cooperation. Um, publicly, I'd like to thank our guys. We have worked seven days a week for the last month and a half, and so have the programming people in the rec department. They're great, doing a great job. And while I'm thanking them, I also wanna thank the community. We had a party in the park, uh, Saturday right before the fireworks 
And that was volunteerism of ShopRite, giving us the food, the YMCA running the programs, Attack the Rim, uh, running a basketball clinic. Three of our guys from Middletown, Stefan Bonneau, Micah Brand, uh, John Merchant, all played pros, are all educated, college-educated men, and they're role models for our kids. And that's, that's, a, that's a wonderful thing to see in the park. It's a great thing. Um, I also want to take the time to tell you that uh, the quotes are in uh, and designs are in for the Maple Hill Park. Uh, if anybody would like to see them, I have them. Uh, we was talking to Tom earlier. Maybe we'll do a quick park and rec committee meeting before a common council meeting. We can get Eileen to put some up on the TV screen and, and talk about them. I'd rather have uh, a bunch of people decide on about six different options instead of just a couple people deciding. Uh, at Maple Hill Park also, uh, the storm we had uh, broke our dam over there and took the water level in our pond very low. And we just got that all cleaned up with the aerator, and we had to turn the aerator off. But that dam is fixed. Uh, now we're just going to make it where we can go across it again. Uh, the aerator will be back on, and it will clean up that pond we're working so hard to clean up. And lastly, I just want to mention the, the skate park is coming along. Uh, I went over and took new pictures before coming here. Uh, we'll get them up on Facebook for the public to see, and I know they get shared. And while I'm up here, I would like to also thank... Uh, Jacob Tweel and Chris Gross, because I know they've had to put a lot more time and energy into the skate park than they planned uh, in the beginning stages, and it's greatly appreciated, so now it's up and running. So, Jacob, thank you very much. Okay. Corporation Council. Good evening, everyone. <laughs> First, I want to uh, just follow up on your comment, Jerry, about the electronic drop-off. And Jacob may not have gotten a report, but I want to say publicly, I took advantage of that. And the, you, your guys in the department ran it beautifully, Jacob. They were very well organized. They, they did it to, uh, an excellent job. I was so impressed by what they did. And that's a credit to Jacob and his department. Um, You're welcome. No problem. Yeah. I may actually speak a little more longer tonight than Jacob did, so you know that's that's a that's a rare rare occasion. Um, I'd also like to, while I'm giving some um, some compliments here, I have to say for Maria, and Maria works 24/7 sometimes for the city, and and what a fireworks show Saturday night! I think anyone who was there would would agree it was absolutely amazing. And I know Chris uh, Brinkerhoff really puts in a lot of time too. But Maria, thanks for those fireworks. We really enjoyed them. Um, Kevin, congratulations to Kevin on his election, and welcome as the liaison. I know Kevin, he's a good man, and I think he's going to do a great job with us. I, I do want to mention uh, there is an item on the agenda. Don Parrish couldn't make it tonight, but he wanted me to uh, make sure that you're aware. There is a resolution authorizing the issuance of $9.7 million in serial bonds to pay for the cost of the DRI project. Now, that may come as a little surprise, but it's not what it seems. Uh, we did meet with the uh, uh, folks from the state on the DRI last week, and um, we weren't quite sure how the funding was going to come into us, and we thought we might get the funds up front and then expend them. It turns out, like other uh, state money, which we're happy to get, but generally we have to lay out the money first, and then they reimburse us. So that's why this is in front of you tonight, to approve the bonding in the event we need it. Um, and to have it in the in our back pocket so uh, uh but they did explain to us that we will be laying out the funds but they do hope to have a very quick reimbursement process and and we certainly are hopeful of that as well um, and then uh, i will not speak any further now because i'll be coming up for the public hearing to talk about the uh, the new zoning for the downtown area okay thanks thank you richard city clerk <clears throat> just one uh business item the uh we're going to be changing the Common Council meeting again, if uh, uh, President Rodriguez agrees, to July 31st because of night out against crime is uh, August 1st, which is Tuesday, which is our meeting. So we'll be doing that. We'll be doing the resolution on the next meeting. That's all I have for tonight. Any question for John? <clears throat> Thank you, John. Public hearings and grievances. Tonight we have a public hearing for a proposed zoning amendment to the city code regarding the downtown mixed use. <coughs> I'll read the public hearing. Notice is hereby given that the City of Middletown will hold a public hearing on Monday, July 3rd on or as near 8 p.m. as possible, Common Council Chamber, second floor, 
16 James Street, to hear any and all persons wishing to be heard on the proposed zoning change to the city code regarding the proposed downtown mixed use, which is DMU. Any and all persons wishing to be heard will be given an opportunity to speak either for or against the proposed zoning amendments. The complete proposed amendment to the code is available at the office of the Common Council Clerk, City Hall, 16 James Street, Room 12, and this is by the order of the Common Council, and it was John C. Nomchek, Clerk of the Common Council. This was published in the Times Held Record on June 26th and June 27th, and also on the City website. Okay, at this time, the public hearing is now open. Good evening, Rich Gurton again, Corporation Council. Um, I'm up here tonight to talk about the, um, the uh, downtown mixed-use zoning district, and I'd like to give a little bit of background. I know the members of the council are pretty well versed in this, but I know for those members of the public who may be watching on TV, I want to give a little background as to how this came about and why it happened. Uh, as you on the, on the council know, we've been in a moratorium for about six months now, and the reason why we went into the moratorium was because as part of the DRI process, we wanted to see what our planners were going to say about what we should do with the downtown. Because if, if we're going to get this $10 million grant, then we wanted to make sure that it would be implemented in proper fashion. And we knew that part of that would, intuitively, we knew that part of that would involve an impact on our zoning for the downtown area. As you know, the uh, zoning for the downtown uh, up till now has been C3. But the C3 Central Business District actually extends to other areas of the city. So the C3 District was not just germane to the downtown, but to other parts. Uh, and also, we had some other zoning districts within the downtown area, uh, I-1 and I-2. And so that is one of the reasons why we went into the moratorium, as we did six months ago. And the purpose of the moratorium, as you know from having to deal with the appeals from the moratorium and approval of some of the projects, uh, the reason we did that was basically put a hold on development to see what our planners said and what came out from that. Um, we, as you know, there were many meetings with our planners about what to do and, and how to approach the downtown. And, and out of that came this, uh, this wonderful strategic investment plan that was submitted to the state and was approved by the state. And, and I just want to point out a couple of, of things that were contained in here. Uh, for instance, they said, what are the goals uh, from the DRI and the downtown vision plan? Make downtown more attractive, walkable, and a functional place for residents, employees, and visitors. Uh, support redevelopment of properties and preservation and adaptive reuse of historic buildings. Bring residents and workers to downtown Middletown through improved housing and employment opportunities and then build connections to local institutions such as the three colleges we have in the city. Uh, so that, that, was, um, that was part of the uh, aspect of the DRI and that was contained right in our strategic investment plan. And then in, the, in the, one of the projects that they recommended, not for funding by the state, but as a project that was useful for us here in Middletown, was to create a, a specific zone for the downtown area, the downtown mixed use uh, zoning district, as they called it. And in the description, the summary description, what they said that the C3 uh, category was broad and was designed for more than just the downtown. But they did say a specialized zoning district should be developed to permit a wide range of uses appropriate for a central business district, facilitate a 24-7 mixed use environment with residents as well as workers, and promote strong design elements that complement Middletown's historic downtown fabric. Um, and, and so they went into a whole number of things of, of what they should do. One of them was to create a zone just for the downtown. The other, they, they recommended that we expand some of the permitted uses and accessory uses, uh, address parking, and things of that nature. Uh, they also suggested that we incorporate a set of design standards and guidelines, including diagrams and illustrations, as appropriate. What they're talking about there is something that has come in vogue of late called um, uh, form-based zoning, where certain municipalities will adopt as part of their zoning, particularly for downtown areas, actual design of buildings, what they would recommend. And if you had this type of building, then these types of uses automatically can go into that. Uh, we considered that as part of this new downtown district, but felt that, and when I say we, I'm talking about the mayor, Maria Bruni, uh, John Degnan and myself, all of us, by the way, who've been here in the city for, 
I hate to say how many years now. I mean, I remember walking downtown to Thraw Library when I was a little kid to, and going to Woolworths and popping the balloon and seeing if the Sunday cost one cent or 35 cents or, you know, anywhere in between. So we have a lot of history with the downtown. Um, but we also felt that to incorporate those types of standards would not be necessary in, in our case because we already are pretty well built out and the buildings exist. The question is how can we, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, have them for adaptive reuse and, and make the best use of them uh, as they currently exist. So uh, Joe and I, oh, by the way, one other thing, I just have to point this out. They did say in the plan that uh, if, they, if we were to hire a consultant to write the zoning code for the DMU, they figured it would cost $50,000. But I can tell you by the mayor and Maria and John and me working for it, it doesn't cost the city anything extra, and I think we came up with a good product. I just have to put that in there. Um, so let me just summarize for you the changes that are incorporated um, in the proposed downtown mixed-use uh, district. Uh, first of all, and, and this was something I wanted to do. Uh, normally when you pass legislation, you don't always put a legislative intent in there. But I wanted to make sure that as part of this district, we had a legislative intent specifically incorporated into the zoning district to show to people why we did this and what we were thinking. What was the philosophy behind this new downtown mixed-use district? And, and it, it's incorporating aspects of the strategic investment plan uh, that was approved by the state and created with the use of, with help of our planners. And so the legislative intent specifies that it's designed to implement the strategic investment plan, in particular the third goal, which is to support redevelopment of underutilized properties and the preservation and adaptive reuse of historic buildings with technical and financial resources. So the DMU district uh, will encompass the specific boundaries of our currently existing business improvement district. We felt it was important to overlay that new zone right onto the uh, business improvement district. And, and really what we're hoping to accomplish through this, and as set, set forth in the strategic, in, strategic investment plan, the design of the district is to permit a wide range of uses appropriate for a, a central business district and facilitate this 24-7 mixed-use environment. In other words, we wanted to <coughs> encourage a district that would help people to live, work, and play. That was kind of the theme of the DRI, create an area where people can live, work, and play downtown and then extend throughout Middletown. <coughs> So what did we do? Uh, when you look at it, you may say there's not a huge difference from the C3 zone, and I think that's true. But there are specific uh, niceties, I think, that are included that will separate this from the rest. For instance, we incorporated certain specific design and other standards. We specifically put in this district that all buildings and all uses will, from this point forward, have to comply with the design review guidelines and the architectural Board of Review. Now that's already in our city code and it's already supposed to uh, deal with uses downtown, but people have kind of forgotten about it. So we wanted to put it right in there that we do have these design standards, which is another reason why we didn't think we had to incorporate more design standards. We already have them. Second, the, in the C3 zone, it does allow first floor residential use if the planning board waives it. They say commercial use first floor unless the planning board waives. We changed the downtown to say no, com no residential use on the floor, first floor. It's got to be commercial. Now, you may have seen in the Times Herald record, which, by the way, I thought it was a good article, and that very first paragraph en encompassed what we wanted to do to encourage millennials and artists to come down to downtown and help businesses open up, which I thought was a great lead into their story. But um, uh, I know you did say in there that if someone wants to do it, Certainly they have the right to go to our ZBA, but that would be a use variance, which is a very tough standard to overcome, but it does exist. So that's one thing here is that the first floor has to be commercial use. We also recognize the fact that uh, parking, there are parking lots in downtown and they will be increased as a result of the DRI funding. So we wanted to put in here, if there's uses under 1,500 square feet, and many of the storefronts downtown encompass spaces that are 1,500 square feet or less. So we felt for those types of uses, you don't have to meet any parking requirements because we have parking lots around and they're gonna be increased. Again, make it easier for business. We also wanted to say throughout the downtown, no billboards and murals, because one of the th big things for our planners was aesthetics, streetscapes, and, in, and, and enticing people aesthetically. So we felt billboards and murals might detract from that. And also we put in the requirement, no food trucks or temporary food vendors, uh, unless 
it's a city sponsored event or a city event. Uh, so we wanted to put that in. Now, what did we expand? We did expand certain uses that will be permitted without planning board approval. So for instance, uh, we, since the DRI wants to encourage residency downtown, we said if someone wants to put a one or two family residence or apartment downtown on the second or upper floors, it's permitted without any planning board approval. The other thing we wanted to encourage were professional offices. So if someone comes in with a professional office, architect, engineer, surveyor, insurance, lawyer, um, they can, if they're under 1,500 square feet of space, they do not have to come to the planning board for approval. We've talked about this before, never implemented it. We wanted to implement it here, again, to make it easier for businesses. We did add specific accessory uses. They were not in the code before. One of them is bike racks. One of the focuses of the uh, DRI is to encourage walkability and bikeability. So we said an accessory use, you can put a bicycle rack. There's no provision for that right now in our code. Uh, we do have sidewalk and outdoor cafes under a, a separate portion of the zoning code, but we wanted to put that right in here as an accessory use. We also expanded and it actually created home occupations that will not require uh, planning board approval. And this is kind of a tip of the hat to the way business is going these days. So we referenced uh, offices for an, an, an author, a composer, internet-based business, art teacher, music teacher, photographer, or artist. Again, to encourage people to live and work downtown. Um, but uh, those will not allow live performances or galleries in connection with home occupations, but it will allow them to do their business without coming to planning board. We did keep some of the uses that are already in C3, like personal service stores, funeral homes, billiard parlors, bowling alleys, eating and drinking places, things of that nature. We removed some of the uses that are now allowed in C3, like car washes. That was a recommendation from our planners, gasoline stations, uh, public garages, auto repair, uh, car sales, and dry cleaners. Again, they recommended some of those be taken out. What we added also and modified certain uses that are going to be subject to planning board approval will be personal fitness centers and health clubs. Again, in many of urban areas, particularly where you have millennials coming in, they want to have health club facilities there. So this allows, allows that to happen. Uh, Non-municipal off-street parking. If someone wants to make a business of a parking facility, let's give them the opportunity to do that. Uh, we did expand the um, uh, places of assembly to include things like art centers, conference centers, art galleries, antique centers. We also included a recommendation from our planners, artists and manufacturing of goods like jewelry or ceramics using hand tools only. We added arts, art, artists, studios, including art classes. We tightened up the definition of hotel for downtown to make it very specific. And then we added, again, a suggestion of our planners, student housing in a downtown area if they're associated with an accredited educational facility. Uh, just two other things, and then I'll be done. Um, we allow the Common Council to finish up projects that came to you as part of the moratorium, such as the soccer field. We felt, you know, the soccer field had gone to the planning board, then came here because of the moratorium. We said, let's not send them back to the planning board. Let's just have them finish up here. So projects that, and there's only, I think, three of them at this point. Um, so they'll finish up with the Common Council. The last part is um, in meeting with the, um, with the DRI folks last week, and this is an amendment that I sent out through John uh, last week to all of you. Um, they may require technically special use permit or, or plan approval on some of these projects. We believe that you don't have to. For instance, the Woolworths project is a city-owned, city-sponsored project. We don't believe it has to go through the planning board review process. Alex Smith and I both agree on that. Um, but if the state requires it, we felt that you are all familiar with these DRI projects anyway. So if they require approval, those type, only the DRI funded projects, we put in, I put in here that if the state requires some type of formal approval, it will be with you and not with the planning board. But it's just for those DRI funded projects and that very limited scope. So that would be the, what I sent out last week and I had a few changes noted in red. I would ask one of you to uh, propose an amendment to the code, that the, uh, the, the district resolution that was offered on June 20th. So you would amend it to incorporate those few changes. So that, I just want to give some background, expand. Uh, I know you know most of this, but I want to also give you some of our thinking, and I wanted the folks at home also to be able to know why this came about. 
Rich, going back, if I have a second floor, a third floor commercial, and I want to make residential, they don't have to go to the planning board anymore? If they have a one, one family or a two family. Now, if they have three residential uses, that's still a multiple residence, that will have to go to the planning board. But there are plenty of buildings, for instance, uh, the Havana Cigar House, which is now vacant, I think they have two apartments in there, you know, that, that uh, were there. If they wanted, let's say they had never had apartments in there, they could just go in and make two apartments. They do not need planning board approval. How would we know? Building department. They have to get building permits. Sure. They still have to go through that process. They have to meet building codes and, and fire codes. But the planning board process, we just felt, take that away. Make it easier for people to live downtown. Anyone from the public have any questions, comments, concerns? Come on up. How are you? Hello. So I'm Ronalyn Davis Benware. I actually own the local ice cream truck. Um, I know a lot of the city common council members. Um, I heard that the food vending would be changed. I know that there's usually in the downtown area myself, and there is a fire company that runs on a Friday. Um, and when I had questioned this, I was told because the streets of Middletown were narrow and it was like a public safety thing. That was what I had first been told. So I can tell you I've been doing this for 25 years. We have never had a pedestrian hit crossing to our ice cream truck. We've never had a motor vehicle accident. The streets of Middletown haven't changed. There's deliveries of food restaurant trucks on these streets every single day. There is a city limit as to how long we can be sitting in a certain spot already. So I'm a little concerned with why all of a sudden we're being pushed out of the city. Ironically enough, mentioning the Havana House, it was myself and my boyfriend at the time who actually bought that building, carried bricks out, and renovated that building into a very small cafe at the time. Um, not public knowledge, we went our separate ways, he closed the business down. I still had my ice cream truck at the time, and we still went about our business. Um, I'm a community girl. My family's been here, born and raised. We donate thousands of dollars back to the community from our ice cream business every year. I work as a school nurse for the district. Kevin and I have worked together. I'm on the board of the Little League. I'm on the Middletown Cares Coalition. I reach out to every city event offering our services. We advertise for every event that goes in the city. You'll see a sign in our window. We've never not been community. I never spoke Spanish before. Those of you that know me, they know that I'm a straight up Irish girl. We started getting a large Latino population. We transferred our signs not only to English, but into Spanish. We realized that reaching out to the community wasn't just about ice cream. We had a lot of um, poor, economically challenged individuals living in our community. We do a coat drive every year. We reach out, I mean, Kate will tell you herself. Um, I work on a high school level. We have young girls that put themselves in bad situations. We reach out, we get them baby clothes. So it's not just an aesthetically pleasing truck that goes through the city of Middletown. We actually do a lot of good community relations. I could see maybe not letting future food trucks in or future ice cream trucks or things like that. But I think those of us that have already established a relationship with our community, and we have, we've really established. I mean, Chris and I have talked about building a nicer park. We've written letters. We put on our Facebook page, you know, please, you know, win our park, you know, grant money. We just invested a lot of money from our Little League into some of the parks. I joined the Little League board because it was put up or shut up kind of season. And we've changed changes up there. So we are a community family. My sister and I do nursing services for free in our community to our elderly that are uneducated. I work as a diabetes educator in this community. Um, it's not just about the ice cream truck going through. It's really about being a community girl and reaching out there into the community. So if we were just about making a profit in the business, I would see maybe banning the ice cream trucks or the food vendor trucks. But I know Gil that has the fire company truck. He's the same thing. They give back a lot of money back into the community. They reach out. They do a lot of volunteer stuff with the community. So I, I'm a little upset that I, I get that you want it to be aesthetically pleasing or what I'm hearing is that we're blocking traffic. But even our city of Middletown um, Police Department this year, because sports camp is closed. I work as a nurse for sports camp. Thanks, Chris. No job this year. No, just kidding. <laughs> um, you know, we've, we've teamed up with a few of your public police officers who have done, we've done a quite good campaign. Um, actually, it was Brink's idea. We got on board with it. The police officers donate money, we give them tokens, they give them out to kids to get free ice cream when they're caught doing something good in the community. So it's not just about the aesthetically unpleasing ice cream truck kind of thing. We really do try to get on board with the other community members. That's all I got. 
Thank you. Anyone else from the public? I just want to clarify the uh, the food truck that's at Festival Square on Friday nights. That's the Munhagen uh, Fire Department and nonprofit city city organization, and it's a city sponsored event. So I just want to clarify it. And and the uh, DMU is just a downtown. It's not the entire city or other the parks are throughout the city. So it's just for the downtown mixed use district. Thank you. Anyone else? I'm sorry, here I am again. Uh, I would like to speak about um, the lady of the ice cream truck. And that's a very amazing happiness for the kids, for our children, for our community to be home and listen that music far away coming and the kids get excited even my dogs get excited because they know that the ice cream truck is coming and you know it's very um it's a representation of the community we have where everybody i mean can have that happiness of the ice cream in, in other parts in other cities that has been um, taken away i i think they've been taking away a lot of happiness for the kids for our community and I will highly support to, to keep the ice cream truck running on the streets because they do it safely and they bring a lot of happiness to, to the kids. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Any board members? Councilman? All the way. Thank you. Um, regarding that, the comment um, from Mrs. Benware, can somebody say or explain what the spirit of that is, sort of? I mean, are we concerned that we're going to have 12 of these trucks showing up, or? I think that's one of the concerns, is the regulation. I mean, right now, the planning board, there is a provision in the zoning code as it is that temporary movable business st structures have to get planning board approval. Uh, I don't know whether any of these food vendors that presently exist did get planning board approval. They should. Um, but I, I think the sense was, and we've gone back and forth. Just like people were talking about the outdoor music, you know, what, what do we want for our area? And, um, you know, I have a daughter who lives in Austin, Texas, and, and they have built their community heavily on food trucks and, and portable vendors. But there, they have, as far as I know, for the most part, they restrict them to vacant lots where they can park their trucks and people go to the vacant lots. You know, there's, there's not that type of space here downtown. It's a very compact area, and I think the sense was, you know, you have a lot of businesses who are here, a lot of eating and drinking establishments that already exist throughout the downtown area, um, and, um, you know, we just, that was a sense that aesthetically and other reasons, regulations maybe, but um, do we want food trucks going through the downtown area? The sense was no. Now, obviously, if you disagree as a board, you can amend the, that aspect of the code to allow it. Um, but I think if, if uh, we're looking at a cohesive district and, and kind of a philosophy behind it and the aesthetics and everything that goes with it, uh, that's why we presented it that way. Is there a process? You said there is a process that... Like, did you have to, I don't know, how should I do this? Well, I, I wouldn't put her on the spot. I don't wanna, Whether she yeah, did yeah, or yeah. didn't, I don't want to know that. Okay, that's fair. No, yeah. no thank you for yeah. help on that. Sure. Thank you. No, no, no. We don't need to put her on yeah. the spot for <laughs> I that. I didn't want to. Okay. No. But, yeah. but is there a process that people, in other words, that can we say, okay, you know what, you can't come in here and sell hamburgers because we've already got two people selling hamburgers. Well, you can't person. do that. I remember years ago someone uh, came in and wanted to put a laundromat near another laundromat and, and the people came to the planning board and said you can't do that. It's going to affect their business. That's not a proper uh, consideration of, um, of land use planning. So I don't think that's an appropriate consideration that there's already you know existing ice cream. You can't say that. That's not a reason to stop it. Can I ask a question on this vein? The, the district we're talking about geographically, does that not I, include Thrall Park? It does. That's my concern. But, if, but remember, if they're city-sponsored or city events, they will be allowed. But what about things like the Dia de los Niños or things like that where she would be, it doesn't necessarily get run by Middletown, 
but it is a community event. I mean, I think about things like that where she plays a pretty primary role. Thrall being contained inside that district, I feel like that would affect that role. I don't know, Marie. That would fall on the special events. Yeah, if yeah, special events, they have to get permits and stuff, right, Chris, in the parks? They got to get insurance, uh, Board of right. Health permits, and all that stuff. So Cause they, they have that be exempt from this? Yeah, they basically? have temporary food vendors as it is at these events. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So that would be, would fall in that category. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm, just, yeah. I, I'm just saying, like, I... I it would be a city sponsor. I, right. I, I just, I heard Ronnie to say, and she's 100% right. I mean, the, 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 the role that they play here is, is a little bit bigger than being sure. an ice cream truck. Um, that includes even uh, my event night out. And she, they always give back. So I just, I, I think that to create a hardship for someone who does so much for us. Seems but take, like, you, take yours, the, uh, right. the night out against, yeah, but I, I think night out against crime. Right. That's a city sponsored well, event. Well, she's fine and there anyway because we're not in the district. We're right. We're right, but even here. then, you, even if you were downtown and, you, and you've been in downtown sometimes, right. you know, that would be okay. Right, but I think about ones that aren't. That's why I'm saying, like, when you, we have things, but you're saying that that falls under that. you got a permit there, for the park. There are festivals, they have to come in to get permits on that, and that's city involvement. Insurance yeah. and all that stuff, too. Right. Okay. I'm hearing that now. The city requires that we make Can we, right. we, if you want to talk, you got to come up to the mic. It's... We've been doing this for 25 years. Yeah, they can't hear you on TV. We, we are. Sorry. We've been doing this for 25 years. Um, we've seen people in different roles in the city. We've followed all of the roles the city has requested. When we started out, the permits were very low. We pay $125 per person that works our truck, and I think it's $250 for the truck itself to come through the city of Middletown. We have to name the city as an insurance carrier on our insurance policy. The ironic part is when the concerts first came to downtown Middletown, it was just a thought process. We were approached. We were asked to bring our ice cream truck down there to draw people down there, and we did. Another ice cream business moved in. We were asked to leave, and we did. Um, you know, we actually have followed the city's rules, and it's never been where, well, you're now not allowed there. You know, it's never been. We've always been very good about following the city rules. Um, you know, we weren't, there was nothing that said we couldn't go back downtown to do the concert. We just realized there was another business there and we respected that business and left. But when it was first developed, we were asked to come and participate. So that's the only thing I'm concerned about is I do do a large area. Um, I do Linden Avenue. I will do this. I do the skate park area now. There are other areas that this zoning does fall into that I do on a regular basis. So th that does concern me. Okay. Old McCliner. Um, is there any way to grandfather a business that's been here, say, with a 10-year requirement or a 15-year or something like that? Is, can that legally be done? <laughs> I'm reminded of what Ken McVeigh said, who used to be corporation counsel in Alderman at Large many years ago. And Ken said, the law is what I say it is until the court tells me otherwise. So having said that, um, I believe it would be legal to grandfather in, but what's the criteria? You know, that's, that's you know, you, uh, can you do that? I think you could. Um, but, but, but we could consider that possibly as amending afterwards. I mean. Uh, yes, you could. You could. As it is now, again, keep in mind, this does not prevent those who are already participating with the city-sponsored events. I right. just want to drive that point home. Um, I understand that, yeah. But, um, you know, if, you, if you, you have the code in front of you, if you wanted to, uh, you know, prove it as is and, and consider something like that as, as an amendment to that, uh, you know, whether tonight or another night, um, certainly you can, you're the policymakers. We just suggest. We just give our opinions. All right. Okay. I, I also wanted to thank you for doing an excellent job on this and thank the governor for providing within the funding for our planners and you're working closely with them. Cause no, they really were wonderful and I, they gave us great ideas. They, they were so good at being ready each time and having done their homework and having everything prepared and this fits right in with that pattern where the six months are over, you've worked with them and here it is on the table. So Thank you, Jerry. Fight. That means a lot. I appreciate that. Thanks. Anyone else on the council? I have a motion to close. 
Alderman Kleiner, seconded by Alderman Witt. All in favor? Aye. Public hearings now close. Remarks of Alderman. Alderman Burr. First, I would like to. Ooh, am I on? First, I'd like to thank all our constituents come out for a safe summer. Uh, most of the concerns, as we heard tonight and earlier in Jude's thing, was speeding. And the chief addressed it, you know, what concerns they had and what he could possibly do. He was talking about our uh, machine, which is down right now, just sticking in neighborhoods to try to keep them you know, in that 30 mile an hour speed zone. But I'd like to thank the chief and all them for you know, talking to our constituents about that. Um, Maria, Chris, and all the staff, thank you for another great weekend. You know, a lot goes involved in that, and it came off nice and smooth, even a little rain on Friday. But And then uh, lastly, uh, I have to schedule a park and rec meeting. Uh, we want to go. We have some designs, as Chris said, and we want to have all the council have their input, especially Kate and uh, Paul that's going to be in their neighborhood. 30 or 7. On the 18th. On the 18th. We'll do the 7th. Seven. Okay. And happy Fourth of July, everybody. Thank you. Mayor Crisou. Good evening. Um, I'd like to start by thanking Maria for another fine July Fourth weekend. I know you did an outstanding job. This year I was unable to attend. I was celebrating my 40th birthday party, but I did get to see the finale of the fireworks from my house, which I have to date never been able to do. So that tells me that this was by far above and beyond what we've usually seen, so that is pretty excellent. And thanks for doing that for the party, it was great. Um, I have some apologies to make. My third ward meeting actually fell on my, the date of my actual birthday this year. Uh, Alderman Johnson was unable to cover the meeting for me. Uh, I did send an email to the, my regular attendees and recipients of our notes. Uh, however, I did fail to tell John to take it off the calendar, and that is me dropping the ball, so I apologize for anyone who arrived that evening and found a darkened building, so I apologize. Um, that being said, the meeting for July 5th will be taking place, uh, July 5th, July 25th, will be taking place at 7 p.m. here at City Hall, um, and uh, that will go off. The net Neighborhood Watch meeting is next week. Uh, on Tuesday at 7 p.m., we will be having the meeting for July. Uh, in advance, I'll let you know that we do not hold a Neighborhood Watch meeting in August in lieu of Night Out Against Crime. Um, for the third ward, our Safe Summer Initiative will be taking place this Wednesday at Maple Hill Park. So I will see all of you there. That's Wednesday the 5th. Um, as for Night Out, we're accepting more donations tonight. I also have a pile that I'm sending off to um, finance to, be ex to the Board of Estimate to be accepted. I just want to once again thank our sponsors every year. We can't run this event without them. I think it's a very important police community night in Middletown, very celebratory. I want to say thank you tonight because we have a fireworks sponsor, and that is Prestige Lexus of Middletown, and they're going to come in and sponsor the fireworks for us this year. That being said, it is the same company that put on fireworks this weekend, so I'm expecting it to be outstanding. Um, as for our zoning, I just want to make the statement that I do not want to create a hardship for um, someone who, a business that has been such a big part of our community for so many years. And as mentioned, and I, I attest to this and have been involved with Ronnie on many things, that this is more than selling ice cream. This is more than a business. Um, we talk about for profit, not for profit. Um, <laughs> I wouldn't call her for profit ice cream truck <laughs> at all. Uh, so that being said, it's important to me that we make sure that we don't create a hardship with this zoning to them. Uh, if there is a way, Richard, for us to grandfather this, I'm all for it. I really want to see it done. Um, if the interest is in getting this passed tonight in a timely fashion, I'm okay with that, with the understanding that we move forward with an amendment pretty much right away. That's all I have for tonight. Thank you very much, and happy 4th, everyone. Thank you very much. Uh, I agree with, with Kate, what she said there at the end, as far as this amendment, or as far as this uh, zoning thing goes. Uh, I'm not going to hold it up, um, but I do want to explore the options that we can try to do with this. And I certainly respect the process and I appreciate your, your patience with my questions. And uh, I'd like to, I'll help with trying to review that if possible. Um, 
I was in Atlanta this week, which is why I missed the weekend's festivities. I, I heard it went very well. Congratulations. I, I think not only were people excited who were there, but they were excited in anticipation. I could see that on social media, and I think that's a, a good thing for our community that this is one of those things that continues to get stronger and stronger. So congratulations to everybody who was involved in that, and I hope that just continues to grow. Um, ironically, this zoning thing where I was in Atlanta, I spent some time in Alpharetta, and they had a very, I don't know the word for word how they did it and had it written up, but it seemed very similar to what we're looking to do, and it was really a tremendous uh, site where you had the the businesses and it was booming and you had the millennials and the places where they could live on top of it and it was a very nice feel to it and there was a lot of energy and I would love to I mean it's not going to happen overnight here but when I when I talk to anybody about things it's about this development and I'm a huge fan and a huge supporter of this and I'm looking forward to seeing how it all turns out so um, like I said I was away so I apologize for missing the weekends activities and for the uh, missing the, the safe summer uh, initiative for the second ward. I saw that, uh, that Jerry was there and, and uh, President Rodriguez was there. So thank you. Over Kleiner. Um, thank you. I, I just want to start off with uh, next Monday, a week from tonight at 7 p.m. We'll have our second ward constituents meeting here. Um, so please come out. Um, I did attend the Safe Summer Initiative the last Wednesday uh, out in the lawn in front of the YMCA. And for people, there'll still be the third ward one this coming Wednesday and the fourth ward after the week after. And you have everybody from the city there you would want to talk to. You have the commissioner, you have the mayor, you have Maria in Maria's office. Uh, you have the police chief, the lieutenant, and a lot of police officers. Uh, Council President Rodriguez, um, your alderman, and you know it's a great chance to come out and give us uh, some ideas and talk to people about what's going on in the city. So um, please take advantage of it. Uh, Chris, I drove by the pool uh, yesterday at Davidge. It was packed. I don't know, think you could have fit any more people in there. So. Um, the Stars and Stripes, uh, I thank Jimmy Stir once again for coming to Middletown and, and uh, uh, you know, it got rained out of the park, but gee, we just happened to have the Paramount Theater standing by and isn't that nice? So that was, that was really good. Uh, the fireworks, I love the pacing this year. I love when they don't have those spaces and it just keeps going one after another. I, I thought they did an excellent job on the fireworks. So. Um, that, that I, I know there's a lot of hard work. I see so many police officers and parks people and, and Jacobs people, and uh, so I thank everyone for making that go so smoothly. Um, Kevin Gomez, thank you. Uh, we look forward to working with you. I thank John Perino for stopping by too, um, and uh, uh, wish you much success and congratulations. Um, and uh, finally, um, the uh, want to thank St. Paul's Church and its board and its uh, and, and its um, really its whole population because they once again have approved having the warming station for this coming season, and that takes a vote and they have to agree every year they're going to do it and the Salvation Army is going to um, step up and do the administrative work and so I, I thank everyone and uh, I certainly look forward to a, you know it's 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 a tough thing but and it's tough to be talking about when it's 90 degrees out but the cold weather will come back and and so uh, I, I thank the church and everyone involved thank you Alderman John Francois. Good evening. Thank you. Uh, the Public Works Committee met this evening. I just want to uh, thank all the constituents that came out this evening to listen to our meeting. Uh, you guys have a great ideas and concerns uh, to, uh, to the issue we have with speeding in the city, and we will take that into consideration and act on that. I want to thank you for listening to our meeting tonight, and also thank you 
Kevin Gomez for your idea installing the stop signs throughout the whole city. Uh, the, 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 bus, the bus stop sign throughout the whole city. Yeah. Also, the, uh, the, the county, depart the county uh, planning department have worked hard with the uh, DPW department for helping us locate exactly where the sign should be, the bus stop sign throughout the city. I want to thank you again, kudos to the county for helping us doing that. And also Maria, it was a great job. The, spot, the firework was excellent and I loved it. My family loved it and a lot of people came out, appreciate it. And also I want to wish everybody happy and safe 4th of July. Thank you. All of us, Sid. Hello, good evening. Oh, looks like we had a firework show already. Oh, nice, just on time. That was for Drew, that was the only for Drew. <laughs> <laughs> um, Kevin, congratulations. It was a pleasure to get to know you throughout your journey, and now it's going to be great working together. Um, I just want to say that the whole topic about the fire truck, like everyone said, it's not just the fire truck. I personally grew up with that growing up, Prince Street, then moving on to Lafayette. I saw the transition, so it was, it's actually more than that. It means a lot more to not only the community, the children, but also the Hispanic community because they feel included too. Um, with July 4th coming up tomorrow, I just want to say that fireworks show was amazing. I saw it. It was beautiful. And I just hope everybody stays safe. Thank you. Thank you. New business. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Burr to authorize the donation of, of a 2008 Chevy Suburban that can be used by the Middletown Recreation and Parks Department. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Burr, seconded by Alderman Rick Cassil. Any discussion? Alderman Kleiner. Uh, I just want to mention, I think that's from Mid-City Transit, is that correct? Is that, right? that is correct. Chris, okay, just for anyone who doesn't know, thank you. Anyone else? Roll. Bram Kazoon? Aye. John Francois? Aye. Sid? Aye. Witt? Aye. Kleiner? Aye. Burr? Aye. President Arredicus? Aye. Resolution passes. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Witt to authorize the treasurer to transfer $36,136 from the general fund balance to fund a new code enforcement officer position. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Witt, seconded by Alderman Kassoon. Any discussion? Roll. Bram Kassoon? Aye. John Francois? Aye. Sid? Aye. Witt? Aye. Kleiner? Aye. Burr? Aye. President Rodriguez? Aye. Resolution passes. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Graham Kassoon to authorize the mayor to sign the attached documents with Municipay to implement a credit card payment system at the finance counter in City Hall. Seconded by Alderman Burr. Any discussion? Roll. Bram Kassoon? Aye. John Francois? Aye. Sid? Aye. Witt? Aye. Kleiner? Aye. Burr? Aye. President Rodriguez? Aye. Resolution passes. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Kleiner to concur with the mayor's appointment of Kate Honders to serve on the Shade Tree Committee, term expiring December 31st, 2017. Resolution sponsored by Alderman <coughs> Kleiner, seconded by Alderman Witt. Any discussion? Roll. Bram Kassoon? Aye. John Francois? Aye. Sid? Aye. Witt? Aye. Kleiner? Aye. Burr? Aye. President Rodriguez? Aye. Resolution passes. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Sid to approve the CEQA for the downtown mixed use zone change. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Sid, seconded by Alderman John Francois. Any discussion? Roll. Bram Kassoon? Aye. John Francois? Aye. Sid? Aye. Witt? Aye. Kleiner? Aye. Burr? Aye. President Rodriguez? Aye. Resolution passes. Resolution sponsored by Alderman John Francois to amend the city code regarding downtown, downtown mixed use. Resolution sponsored by Alderman John Francois, seconded by Alderman Kassoon. Any discussion? Roll. Bram Kassoon? Aye. John Francois? Aye. Sid? Aye. Witt? Aye. Kleiner? Aye. Burr? Aye. President Rodriguez? Aye. Resolution passes. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Ram Kassoon to approve a transfer from the general fund balance of up to $1 million to advance monies to fund the DRI projects to be paid back by bans being issued for the New York State DRI grant upon completion. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Ram Kassoon, seconded by Alderman John Francois. Any discussion? Roll. Ram Kassoon? Aye. John Francois? Aye. Sid? Aye. Witt? Aye. Kleiner? Aye. Burr? Aye. President Rodriguez? Aye. Resolution passes. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Burr, to authorizing the issuance of 9,700,000 serial bonds to pay for the cost of the downtown revitalization initiative product, and these will be paid back by the bans issued for the New York State DRI. 
Resolution sponsored by Alderman Burr, seconded by Alderman Kleiner. Any discussion? Roll. Graham Kassoon? Aye. John Francois? Aye. Sid? Aye. Witt? Aye. Kleiner? Aye. Burr? Aye. President Rodriguez? Aye. Resolution passes. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Burr. Resolution to authorize the treasurer to transfer $418,839.21 from the general fund balance to fund the retroactive pay increases for the fire department. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Burr, seconded by Alderman Kleiner. Any discussion? Roll. Ram Kassoon? Aye. John Francois? Aye. Sid? Aye. Witt? Aye. Kleiner? Aye. Burr? Aye. President Rodriguez? Aye. Resolution passes. <coughs> Resolution sponsored by Old Woman Ram Kassoon to accept a $100 donation in support of Middletown Neighborhood Watch. Sponsored by Old Ram Kassoon, seconded by Alderman Witt. Any discussion? Roll. Ram Kassoon? Aye. John Francois? Aye. Sid? Aye. Witt? Aye. Kleiner? Aye. Burr? Aye. President Rodriguez? Aye. Resolution passes. Resolution sponsored by Alderman John Francois to authorize the mayor to sign an insurance agreement with PERMA who is replacing the city's volunteer firefighters workers' compensation program, reducing the cost by $20,000 annually. Resolution sponsored by Alderman John Francois, seconded by Alderman Kleiner. Any discussion? Roll. Graham Kassoon? Aye. John Francois? Aye. Sid? Aye. Witt? Aye. Kleiner? Aye. Burr? Aye. President Rodriguez? Aye. Resolution passes. That's all for new business. Audit. Mr. President, I move the accounts be audited, the claims be adjusted, and the city treasurer be authorized to issue warrants for their payment. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Ray Kassoon, seconded by Alderman Burr. Roll. Graham Kassoon? Aye. John Francois? Aye. Sid? Aye. Witt? Aye. Kleiner? Aye. Burr? Aye. President Rodriguez? Resolution passes. Adjournment. So moved. So moved.